very good afternoon to one and all present here. Warm greetings from MTC Global, Bangalore, India. And today's session, I thought of sharing my experience while I engaged different webinar on this particular subject, effective online teaching strategies, including the discussion we have in our MTC Global platform, I thought of putting across some of the thoughts so that all of us present here, especially the teaching fraternity, we can look inside, come out with some kind of innovative thought processes to ensure that this new normal, you are able to address the challenges effectively. At the same time, we ensure that expected outcome from our teaching are achieved. I thank you once again, all of you, for your gracious presence this afternoon for this brief session on effective online teaching strategies. Now, before we go to the teaching strategies, let us look at the prevailing condition we are going through. Now, all of us are aware that MHRD has given direction that classes will resume only after August 15. And UGC has given already direction that the new session 2020-21 will start from 1st September. So these are the directives. If you look at the world affairs across the globe, Malaysian government has stated that until there is any COVID or until any vaccination come out, the school will not open. We cannot take the risk of our youth. If you look at what happened in Spain, after the school started working, the number of cases have gone up by many fold. That's the reason when MHRD has said before that from July, the academic session will start. But given the situation today, the kind of surge in infection rate, I think we're into the community spread state. So we are going through a very, very difficult time and all are at fix what to do. At one hand, the education, students' careers, the development, the economy is there. On the other hand, the lives of people are there. So we need to strike a balance. And this is a very, very unprecedented time and the world has never seen this kind of situation. There were many such cases like Spanish flu, so on and so forth, Ebola, H1N1, but those were different cases, but this is a complete different beyond human understanding. Scientists and doctors are working round the clock to come out with some effective medication, treatment or vaccination but still nothing is there. So this is a tough time and moving forward, I think that online is the only way, but there are many myths attached to online program. There was one survey conducted in 2017 by Educos, and that time it was shown that 92% of the teachers are not in favor of online. They don't want to take classes online. And they're in the opinion that online classes are not very effective. So there were a lot of myths. Online classes are boring. We cannot ask questions to the students randomly. We can't take feedback spontaneously. But having said that, offline classes, conventional classes are also boring if it is not addressed properly. And I'm sure that 
all of you will agree with me an online classes needs a different preparation a different strategies different evaluation tools and techniques to ensure that expected outcomes are achieved or to ensure students are engaged the biggest challenges as teachers they express that students don't come they don't attend the online classes so many places they have started taking attendance and giving some marks for the online attendance of the students but having said that there is no other go this is the only way and experts believe that this particular difficult time is not going to go very soon at least some people they believe it will take another 3 to 5 years we have to go through this kind of situation you know madras high court the recent directives on the petition filed by a parent they have cancelled the 10th class examination and there are petitions there are surveys there are social awareness campaigns on different media to cancel the icsc cbse exams and students union they are asking the government not to conduct examination based on the previous assessment marks some marks can be round off giving additional 10% grace marks because generally students prepare well for the final examination and make them go to the next semester or to the next level very tough time maharashtra government time and again is telling that we will hold the examination but not able to do so there are many deemed universities those who have conducted or planning to conduct open book online examination and students those who are interested for offline examinations they're arranging the same as well and if students are not doing well in online examination there is a provision that the same set of students can appear for the offline examination so there are a lot of thinkings the government exploring all avenues mhrd has come out with announcement that there are 32 dedicated tv channels to address the individual class needs there is swam a huge resource hub wherein some classes can be conducted some courses can be conducted and credit can be given to the regular classes i think lot of efforts are done teachers are working day and night to ensure that their students they learn very difficult time and we see that everywhere there are layoffs there are pay cuts it's a financial distress what will happen we don't know the economy at a very bad stage we thought that lockdown when it opens up the all of the vegetables and the common items but it is just reversed we go to vegetable market to see that everything has gone up the tomato the potatoes whatever you name vegetables so for middle class and lower middle class and the poor segments it's a very tough time at one side our career job is at stake other side our children's future is challenged with this situation but we have to find out a solution any problem at any nature it comes out with some opportunities with the challenges if you look at the present time we see there are number of challenges challenges in terms of school dropouts it was there in the newspaper in punjab many private school students their parents are not able to pay the fees for their words so they have taken admission into the government schools many students will eventually drop out from their program it was also there in the newspaper many schools are shutting down many colleges will shut down today in times of india the bangalore issue 
on the front page there is one news that one school in dakshin karnataka the south karnataka has announced that the school will remain shut for the whole year for safety of the students there is trust deficit has increased between the management between the teachers the parents and the teachers number of questions are raised punjab government is taking the lead there is one announcement that only online classes which are being taken for those fees to be paid not for anything else but schools and institutions are also under severe financial pressure they have to work on a new model for sustenance and their case is also true if students fees are not paid then from where they will give the salary of the teachers i think this is a catch 22 situation many places they are giving 50% salary but complete not giving salary i believe everyone will agree with me that this is inhuman because we all have to survive and pass through difficult stage it needs collaboration we have to work as a team to beat this situation and come out successfully teachers if you look at there is a lot of stress teachers are demotivated other day one teacher asked me sir so much data usage is there we are not getting our salary who will pay the students are asking in one of the webinars sir we don't have the internet access and there is huge data charges we are not able to attend the classes there is a peculiar case where in five siblings siblings brother and sisters they all study in one institution and they have only two smartphones at home classes are happening at the same time for all the five siblings so how they will attend given there are only two smartphones so very difficult times i think government needs to come with some innovation with some intervention especially maybe some kind of financial support especially to the private institution to ensure that salaries of the teachers are paid their livelihoods are taken care the tough time and we need disruptive measures there are a lot of pitfalls there are a lot of challenges in karnataka it was in newspaper government has said there should not be any webinar up to standard 5 there should not be any pre recorded video also but in the newspaper today i read that many parents in one survey 70% of the parents said that they want some webinars for their words even they are 3 years 4 years 5 years or 6 years of age at least they are able to see their teachers their friends in the schools in the webinar maybe 2 hours daily would be good enough students the children are stuck at home and there is a lot of stress as well for them even if they don't attend webinar i think most of them are playing with smartphones so why not we have some webinar session at least then way this can be worked out but there are many positive sides also of this unprecedented time i think we teachers are very proactive and smartly we have beaten the situation and we all have become and mastered the art of taking there are time tables regular time tables as we follow in conventional classes the same is being followed online classes there are a lot of expert lectures industry lectures 
and resources are being pulled in across the world students are getting rich input parents are partnering along with the students with the teachers to ensure that their words get the best in this difficult time so in the end academic institutions they are becoming tech savvy they are having they are arranging for it infrastructure so a lot of developments lot of positive aspects also this particular situation has given to all of us now let us look at some of the developments what is happening at present especially this time other day i read in newspaper that kerala state higher education council they have submitted a very futuristic report to government of kerala and they have said that this particular trend is going to stay in the coming years even we come back to normalcy this will stay we will have blended teaching learning mode many companies like facebook tcs they have said clearly that around 70% of their workforces will work from home even we come back to normalcy and start our operations 100% i think that is going to happen why not lot of mdps consulting research work we can do online sitting in one place we can connect to the world i think this is going to be there and the kerala state higher education committee they said that some courses where we don't have the hands on laboratory session we can do it online maybe some of the uh, sessions we can have uh, face to face but where we have the session i think those things we need face to face session so some of the programs can be conducted online and some of the programs can be conducted offline so i think if we have this kind of arrangement the cost of the programs will come down drastically now in the online teaching learning strategy see one thing is very important we can't deliver the session as we do it i think by this time we teachers we all of us know about it like the critical discussion questions the case studies lot of additional inputs and we have to give it to the students beforehand and let them work on it let them go through it i think this particular time has inspired students to become a smart self learner now once they go through those notes those questions review questions case studies come out with queries come out with questions and in the online session i think teachers role is more of mentoring we can't take classes as like we do it in conventional mode all those questions can be discussed all the students queries can be addressed and we can also generate a feedback form for the students students need to fill up those feedback form i think here in artificial intelligence comes into play some the analytics comes into play wherein we can find out based on the feedback report that students understanding level and we can understand who are the slow learners and accordingly we can design some special classes some tutorial or remedial classes for the slow learners i think here the preparation is much more for the teachers than the conventional mode that's one part the second part of this online teaching is the evaluation part how do we evaluate in normal sessions evaluation teaching evaluation or student assessment is different but in online we have to develop the evaluation tools and techniques the assessment tools and techniques and then we need to assess and give them the feedback what is the major challenge is the feedback i think we need to ensure that students get regular feedback and once i say online it's not not be necessarily only through webinar video conferencing mode we have telegram wherein two lakhs no 
the members can join in one group. We have WhatsApp, 250 members can be there in one particular group. We have the email, we have Yahoo group, we have Google groups. So these technological platforms also should be used for online effective teaching learning process. Now, another big challenge that as students and teachers are disconnected, they don't meet face to face. So there is a vacuum. So teachers need to ensure that they always make students feel their presence. Now, how teachers can make feel their presence in the mind of students? There is YouTube channel. There are a lot of other social media platforms. I think we're in, no, our students are connected with us. We can share some good message. We can share some motivational thoughts to inspire the students to get in touch. We can record some video sessions and those video sessions can be uploaded in YouTube and students can go through or we can send it in WhatsApp. Students can go through that and learn. And this way we can maintain our presence in the mind of students. There is another saying going on as on today that technology is the great leveler. Today, whether it is Oxford, Harvard, or a rural college next to our home, all are using technology. The huge infrastructure, the classrooms, the crores, a rupees spent are of no use. Now herein comes the smartness of teachers. How creatively, how innovatively we can engage our students. Because the corporate is under severe pressure. Lot of employees are getting laid off there is a big challenge. And especially the higher education students passing out this year will have tough time as far as their employment is concerned. Until unless they are able to cater to the needs of the corporate. Before this pandemic, the Google, Ernest and Young, they have removed the education from the eligibility criteria. They are looking for right kind of skill sets. I think this particular situation further will encourage many companies not to give much importance on their academic credentials because they are looking for their sustenance, their productivity linked to its profitability. They are looking for skill match, whether incumbents have the they want skill to deliver right at the time when they're selected in the company. So this is another tough time. So not only engaging the students for our curriculum or our courses, but beyond that, what value addition, extra value addition beyond activities we can do for the students or we can counsel or mentor the students so that they become employable once they come out of their campus. I think that's also another big challenge. The challenge in the terms, the Fraser's will have to compete with the experienced people because many are laid off. So that's another challenging area. There was one report by World Economic Forum two years back, and it said that by 2050, there will be a new kind of professionals who will be consultant. The freelancers will have highly expertise. They will not work for anybody. They will use their expertise and work as a consultant. I think this particular situation has given rise of this particular sets of professionals. Because employees 
will try to look for expertise and consultants and freelancers or outsource to get their job done then taking somebody on their payroll i think this particular situations because academics connected with the corporate we don't operate in isolation we have to keep pace with the corporate requirements and the corporate needs i think that's also another big challenge if we look at the micro credential today the big companies udemy and so on and so forth they are doing thousands of certification programs online because many are thinking not to spend lot of money to pursue their higher education for 3 years 4 years instead of that if they can get mastery in one particular skill set probably they can find a good job so rise of micro credentials is another big trend which we can find out today the situations as we said that we all have got the mastery in the technology another big challenge for teachers is to expect the unexpected lot of times i have seen myself when we are using a particular technology to address we find out there is some technical problems so we should be flexible enough to sell through one technology platform to another technology platform successfully so this preparation if not in this channel there is some problem we should be able to sell through to the next technology platform that's another technological set clear course expectation i think that's very very important mhrd has given some indications it has not come in uh, 